Now this may not be that easy for you to see, but right down the middle is a line, and on the left you see the subspace Rn, which is shaded slightly gray, and on the right is Rm, which is white. Now, matrix A takes vectors from Rn to Rm. And how can we illustrate that? Well, you have a vector in Rn, let's call it x, and when you multiply it by a, you get a vector b, and we know that vector b is somewhere in Rm. Now, the other thing that you know is that b must be in the column space of a, because the column space of a is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of a, and a times x takes a linear combination of the columns of a. We also know that there's something called the row space, and the zero vectors are in both of these spaces. As a matter of fact, the zero vector is in every subspace. In particular, it's also in the null space. And notice that the null space is a subspace of Rn. The first theorem of this unit told us that the row space and the null space are orthogonal to each other. The second theorem of this unit told us that any vector x in Rn can be written as a vector in the row space of A plus a vector in the null space of A. We know that a vector in the null space of A is mapped by A to the zero vector. Now focus on the box at the bottom. When you do A times X, we now know that that's the same as a times xr plus xn. But we know that that distributes because a is a linear transformation. And we know that a times xn is equal to zero, so we know that a times x is the same as a times x sub r. Therefore, we know that a takes xr to b as well. Then there's also the left null space, which you can prove is orthogonal to the column space. Let's put some dimensions on this. Let's let R this time be the number of pivots. We used K before, but let's use R. In that case, the column space also has dimension R. And that you can use to argue that A is a one-to-one -one mapping between the row space and the column space of A. The null space then has dimension n minus r, and the left null space has dimension m minus r. So this picture is very, very important, and it kind of tells you everything about what happens when you multiply a vector x by a. And what we're going to see next is that it tells us how to find the best approximation to a solution when ax equals b does not have a solution. That's a topic known as linear least squares.